Dr. Green's influence on endodontics is, is multifaceted. One would be the research he's done, one would be the enthusiasm with, with which he teaches, and also all the people he sent out there to give out that message of how to do endo the right way, to do it on a scientific-based level, and to just make endo better. That's what he's engendered in all the people he's touched. Dr. Green is an amazing educator. First of all, he cares about his residents. We are all his children. I feel like I was part of an extended family when I was his resident at Tufts. And I still consider him, you know, my extended family member. He knows their names. He knows where we went to college. He knows what instrument they played in, in the college marching band. He knows everything about them. He calls them and they call him. These people from Tufts, VCU, and Louisville realize the best two years of their lives are when they the ones they share with Dr. Green. He has a perfect record of making sure that all of his kiddos, all of us, had a place to call home, a permanent home after we were done with Tufts. Everybody had a job when they were graduating. I think Dan Green has always been very compassionate uh, to students. I think he has been, he's dedicated his life to education and it has to be a, a really special occasion for him to receive an award named after I.B. Bender when I.B. Bender was his mentor. And I.B. obviously taught him well because Dan Green has mentored many, many residents and he always puts the resident first. And Dr. Green has trained over 200 endodontic residents and who knows how many uh, dental students. Dr. Green has this amazing ability to read people. He understands personality traits. I think his subspecialty should have been human psychology because he really listens. He listens to everybody that he comes in contact with and he doesn't forget. So he understands where you're coming from and he understands how to guide you. There are three things that Dan Green taught me. The first thing that Dan Green taught me is that every patient you see is a person and not a tooth. The second thing that Dan Green taught me is that it was perfectly acceptable to and really preferred to be available to take a phone call from a doctor when a doctor called you, even in the presence of another patient, because that patient would appreciate the fact that you will take the call from his or her dentist at the same time. And on a humorous note, he also taught me that kosher salami with chopped liver on rye bread was one heck of a sandwich. Dr. Green's extensive and exceptional contribution to endodontics makes this, and the fact that his uh, mentor was I.B. Bender makes this award even more significant. I can think of no more deserving person for this award than Dr. Green. I would just like to extend my most sincere, heartfelt congratulations for this well-deserved honor. It is my privilege to call you my teacher, my mentor, my colleague, and most importantly, my friend and I'm just so happy for you. I would like to thank him on behalf of all the residents whose lives he's touched because you've been very, very special in the lives of many, many people. I'm grateful for this prestigious award named after my mentor. It was my good fortune that I became his first formal student at Albert Einstein in 1960. It was also my privilege to have learned from and been mentored by I.B. Bender, Louis I. Grossman, Sam Seltzer, George Stewart, and Jacob Friedland. I.B. Bender was the direct descendant of Rabbi Yisroel Ben Eliezer, known as the Baal Shem Tov, who is recognized as the progenitor of the Hasidic movement. I.B. centuries later introduced us to evidence-based dentistry at least 50 years before the phrase became au courant. He, along with Sam Seltzer, introduced pulp and periapical biology, completely changing the direction of our specialty. My special accolade came from IB after completing my lecture on pain to the Lewis I. Grossman Study Club in Philadelphia. I returned to my table next to IB and he said, I learned something new tonight. I would like to close with something I wrote for the Journal of Endodontics honoring IB. A crowd of students approaches this diminutive giant to encounter a legend. They expect to stand aside and observe, but they find themselves first enticed by a joke and then challenged by a new way of looking at an old problem. Where does he find the vitality, the energy, and the enthusiasm?
The question is rhetorical. He gets his energy from us and we from him. We are all his students and our lives will never be the same. Thank you again to the association for this wonderful award.